are the same issues they're facing today. In a different way, you know, uh, it's, it's the, the, the issues are fundamentally the same, you know, uh, uh, poverty and confusion, I think. You know, a lot of times we think that when we see, uh, you know, we hear about a, a person doing a, a, a terrible thing and, and um, we see him in the, in the JDC or, or in court, you know, right afterwards, and even when I arrested him, you know, it, it, you know, you look in these kids' eyes and, and you want to know, what in the world? Why would you do that? And, and they don't know. Mm -hmm. you, know you know, they're really confusing. You know, you expect to look in the eyes of some villain, villainous, evil person, and, and they're looking at you, and, they, and, and oftentimes they don't have a clue, that they don't have a clue, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing. And, and then, you know, with this JDAI initiative, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you know something about, um, what we're finding now is that we have a level of, of individuals in um, detention that the level of, of desperation, I'll use that word, that's much more intense than it used to be. You know, I like to have the message, I hammer the message, okay, just stay in school, don't do drugs, stay out mm. of trouble, stay away from violence and, you know, that good package stuff and, this, and everything will be all right. Well, you know, that's fine and good, but, you know, I mean, since in, the, in the recent months, you know, kids are saying that, well, you know, that's good, and, but um, boys between the ages of like, the Af black boys, African-American males between the ages of like 14 to 17, 18, they're homeless. Mm -hmm. So what do you do when, 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 you're, when you're homeless, your mom and dad both are in prison, mm -hmm. and, you, and you have some siblings, and your siblings are calling you up saying that uh, we're, we're in a, we're in a, a, a shelter, Mm -hmm. And they're being kept in the basement, someplace being fed cold corn, as well as being sexually abused. You know, I mean, what you know, and, and you got to come up with some sort of of resources f for your siblings and for yourself and your homeless. You know, yeah. and uh, <laughs> I, did, you know, I, I, sometimes that's just something that I mean. Last time we had that conversation, I just had to leave, and we just sat there quiet and took some deep breaths, and you know, my little can package goods or just stay in school. How are you going to go to school when mm. you're hungry, you don't have a home, mm. you know, and, and, and nothing to eat, and your siblings are calling you in desperation, and you're just in pure raw survival. So that's what, yeah. that's some of what, that's kind of something that we're seeing. So you had mentioned that um, one of the answers uh, a while back when you were an officer was to encourage parents or the, not, obviously not directly to the young people, but encourage parents to um, to refer their child to detention or to the to the police officer to the to the criminal justice system in order to get that resources. Was, that wasn't what we were suggesting, but that's oh. what the police. That was kind sure. of that was kind of uh, what made us start save our sons. You know, mm. just to be you know well, we're using the word term alternatives now, right. but uh, uh, we we were a resource in in, in many ways mm. that that are uh, untraditional, but but the, but kind of the. The coin response to the questions because um, you know parents could see you know when when this crime wave hit you know it, it hit all of us by surprise mm -hmm. somehow drugs came into the black community without our consent without our knowledge and and, and violence came in, and and with some migrating migrations that came from different ways to Minnesota uh, we just saw crime and in that in the drive uh, by um, episodes peak you know mm -hmm. and um, Everybody was grasping for answers, and so um, mothers would call us, and um, and and we'd respond in, in non-traditional ways. And mm -hmm. but mothers were trying to figure out what to do with my son. I see him, you know. I tell him to stay away from these guys, and that's we head straight for that. Mm -hmm. Tell him to to come home from school by seven, and he's out. Doesn't come home mm -hmm. till tomorrow. So mothers can tell when their sons are heading out toward the deep, and and sometimes they hovered in a place that really wasn't. A crime yet, mm -hmm. but but we know that if we don't do something right away, you know, uh, you know they're they're at the point they're approaching the point of no return. Mm -hmm. That's kind of when they would call us. So, what kinds of things would you do with the boys? Well, uh, you know, Big Willie, you know, Big Willie, no. Big Willie, he, he, <laughs> he's got he's got one of those. Uh, I always say he has a James Earl Jones voice. Ooh. You know, and he's a great big guy, and he'd uh, he'd, he'd always accuse us of. of having a mobile brow beating <laughs> and it all depended you know because because big willie was actually he was a deacon at our church 
and, 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 and a superintendent of Sunday school. And so we really, you know, we come from, you know, a Christian background. And, um, and so uh, if we had a chance to and it worked out, you know, we'd, we'd, you know, we'd, we'd have these things we call night raids, for example, mm -hmm. and uh, come in and, and kind of intervene and kind of uh, even sometimes have some prayer with the young man. But then we'd have some things to do. We, we, we have this, this academy. Which, is, which consists of, uh, you know, there's, a, there's Proverbs 27, 17 talks about mm -hmm. iron sharpens iron, men sharpen men. Mm -hmm. And so we've done all kinds of things. We've, we've taken boys all over the country. In the past, we had some resources. We've taken them camping at Camp Ripley. Uh, we've taken them to, um, to uh, historical sites. We brought in professors and doctors and lawyers and, and, and let them see uh, African American males who are loving and caring and gentle, mm -hmm. you know, and um, uh, and and we've gotten an outpouring of support from from uh, uh, people like um, my professor Mahmoud El Kati, who comes mm -hmm. in hammers history, and history is very important because, you know, some of these youth are born into situations where <laughs> no one has explained to them how they got there, you know, and mm -hmm. and, and and who you are and and history outside of spirituality and, and uh, family, you know, is, is probably the most important single element that, that I can think of that can help them understand that street gang culture is not your culture, you know, it's mm -hmm. absorbed into something greater, mm -hmm. something that goes back to um, Frederick Douglass and Martin Luther King, Malcolm, Du Bois, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and even more, you know. If you're just joining us now, we're talking with Melvin Carter, Jr., a gentleman who has spent much of his life protecting the citizens of St. Paul. And we're talking about some of the traditional ways he did so as an officer of the law, but also some non-traditional ways. And one of those ways was with is, is currently with Save Our Sons. The other way is with the Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative, yes. which is um, almost to your both of your both sides of your life, right? In one well, package. Well, both says <laughs> there's only two, but uh, yeah, they they are they are you know areas where I have some blood, sweat, and some tears. Mm -hmm. And that is um, JDAI is the Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative yes. with Ramsey County, and you have been a part of that even before it got started, mm -hmm. correct? Officially, mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about how that happened? Well, you know, it's one of those things where you look up and it's there, you know. But I was a part of an organization some years ago that existed, you know, 30 years before I even became a professional. And th that organization was called Minnesotans for Improved Juvenile Justice. And they did some good things. Well, you know, and, and I was the only African-American in that organization for a while. And there were some really good meeting people there, you know. You know, we looked up and, and we saw that... Uh, Racism, uh, or let's say race, was a very important topic that had to do with the, the disposition of so many things in different elements, different points of contact in the system. And, you know, uh, we wanted to deal with those things, you know. And, um, you know, people, we don't just talk about race really well. You know, I don't mm -hmm. think, it's really hard to, mm -hmm. to you know, because oftentimes it winds up with people being defensive and then people being offensive and then did not did too. And then everybody, everybody <laughs> leaves, you know. But um, uh, so, so, you know, dealing with the issue of race in, term, in, in MIJJ, Minnesotans for Improving, Improved Juvenile Justice, you know, it, it actually wound up, many of us think, caused it to disband, you mm. know. And, but we did brought, we brought in Annie E. Casey, JDAI, you know, in probably at the beginning of, of this last decade mm. in 2000 or so, and, and yeah. maybe even the end in, in of uh, the 1990s, you know. <laughs> and so we brought them in, and um, still that was something that uh, needed some work.